Okay, guys, the English peas has really took off on us now. They're, uh, they're actually getting a little height to them. They're up about, I don't know, four feet maybe, a little taller, which actually it makes it a little easier to pick when they get up here. The harder ones has been the first ones. It's been down low up in the thicker part here, but once they get up here, you know, they're still blooming good. And we've got a pretty fair picking this morning. Looks like we're going to get enough this time to do a little something with. So I think we're going to try something a little different with these once we get them shelled. I'm going to show you what that is in a minute. Um, we're going to be doing something different with them. So hang around to see what we do. Okay, guys, this is the second picking of English peas. We've got a little bit more than we got the other day. Not much, but this time we should have enough to do a canning once we get these shelled, and we'll show you that in just a little while. All right, these are the peas that we've shelled out today. Got them soaking in water for just a few minutes till I get ready to put them in jars. These are the ones that were frozen. I've laid them out before I put them in jars. I'm going to dip them about a minute to two minutes in hot water and then pack them in jars so that they won't be frozen in the middle. Okay guys, what I'm going to do is these peas I have here that were frozen. Please put them in my hot water and I'm going to leave them for just a couple of minutes and I'm going to dip them out into my jars. Okay, we're going to let them sit in this water. It was hot when I put it in, but the peas were frozen for about a minute and a half, two minutes, and then I'm going to start jarring. Okay, guys, these are the ones that were frozen, so I put them in hot water for just a couple of minutes. I have my jars ready back here. And what I'm going to do is add my peas, and then we'll add water. And these were the frozen peas now. You can hot, you can uh, blanch or raw pack. I'm going to show you the raw pack in a minute with the fresh peas. But these are the ones. I'm going to shake them down, get them to right about there, and then add water. We're going to add half a teaspoon of salt. And I use. Uh, natural sea salt with no iodine in it. We're just filling it up to the ring. gets enough water in it. I'm going to add just a little more. Okay. Okay, we wipe the rim on that. Okay, put the lid on, and if we're going to do Danny's way, match them up. Okay, I'm, my peas are getting to pull in here. Tighten it up, put it in here, just hand tight. Okay, now we're going to raw pack. So, same process. We have our jars in the pot. Our fresh beans.
half a teaspoon of salt. Our water. Check to see that they all have the water goes down. There's no air bubbles. Then we clean the top, apply our lid. And we're going to process for 40 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure here. So I'm going to finish this up and get the pressure cooker going. So this is our six jars. It's not bad for two days of picking green, uh, two days of picking English peas. Six jars, pretty good. I'm going to process them for 40 minutes. And this is a pressure canning process, not water bath. All vegetables need to be pressure canned. So 40 minutes in a pressure cooker. Once the little thing starts jigging on top, this little 10 pound pressure gets to jiggling. You turn it down some where it's slightly jiggling and let it go for 40 minutes. Okay, it's been going 40 minutes. As you can see, it's counting the time down. This is about how you want the jiggler to be doing, not too heavy with it. And we're going to let it cool. There we go. 40 minutes. And we're going to let it cool till the pressure drops. Okay, we've just taken them out of the pressure canner. And some of them are still bubbling some. Some of them lost a little bit of water, I can see. But overall, six pints of English peas canned. I already heard a couple of them pop. So that's at least six meals, guys. Okay, hey guys, we got here. This is our uh, English peas that we picked this morning. We actually got twice as many as we got the, uh, the last time. Um, so we're a little bit excited about that. Looks like they're going to actually pull out maybe and do a little bit of what we wanted to do. What we're fixing to do is we're going to be experimenting at this point with some as part of our new project here at Deep South Homestead we're going to be doing some dehydration because we're trying to get more food in a smaller area that's not in such a risk of losing it. Um, we're trying to save energy, um, save jars, everything like that because we do see some hard times coming ahead. We're going back to the ancient way. The ancient ways was dehydration. Uh, they store dried goods, um, so that's where we're headed with some of these. We're going to do some through dehydration, and we're going to show you what it looks like when we get through. Okay, guys, I've measured out a pint jar, and I'm going to put them on my dehydrator tray. We have an Excalibur. We're going to add this pint to that tray so I know how much a pint is and how we can uh, keep up with them when they're through dehydrating. Okay, we're going to put all these on here. This is one pint. We're going to spread them out and put them in the dehydrator. And they should be ready in a few hours. And you want, I think I'm going to do one pint per tray just so that we know that's about what Danny and I eat for two meals. And that way, when we vacuum seal them, we'll know about what we have for per meal. So we put two quarts in the dehydrator and we're putting two quarts into the freezer. We had a gallon of shelled English peas today. Okay guys, Wanda's holding here one of our trays of dehydrated English peas. As you can see, let me see if I can get in here a little bit closer, you can see this is what they look like when they're dehydrated now. We're going to be taking them off of the trays and putting them in little snack bags because this is actually one pint of English peas that have been dehydrated. One pint will do two meals for me and Wanda, so we're kind of storing them that way so we know once they're dehydrated we know how much a pint is because we put one pint per tray. 
Okay. No, we're going to be vacuum sealing later, but right now. Yeah, we'll vacuum seal later, but this is kind of the process that we're going to use. We'll show you all a little bit about what we're doing. Um, let me see if I can. We're taking these and putting them in a bag. Let me see if I can zoom in here and y'all can get a little bit better view of. This is a pint of English peas per snack bag. This will tell us how much we need to rehydrate when it comes time for us to make a meal for Wanda and I. That's our purpose for doing this. Now we're going to back back out here and just work with us a little bit. We're going to show y'all what we're doing and how we're doing it. We're working together on this. And these Excalibur flaps here makes it kind of easy to put the peas in the snack bag. We take them up and fold them and we kind of just work them and let them fall down in there. And there's going to be a couple of little tiny tiny little pieces that's going to stick in here because but these are really the peas that were really too little to eat anyway. We just didn't get them all out. But that's what we have. And that's what it looks like couple of extra ones you might want to throw in there. We got one more tray to go. Okay, we got this tray. If I can get these to get away from these edges. Got it. And for long-term storage use, we're going to be vacuum sealing these, but right now yeah. we're headed to church. We've got quick fix for right now. Quick fix. We just had to get them out of the dehydrator. So we have four bags of dehydrated English peas. They would have took up four pint jars. When we dehydrate these, this is what we have and it'll all fit into one quart bag and you can still have room for more. Yep. You could probably put eight of these into one quart bag. So eight pints would probably go into one quart bag. Yeah, makes but, a lot less storage area. And we're going to use the vacuum seal in and vacuum seal some, but we do want to try them and we're going to show you rehydrating them and cooking them, what, what we do with them. You see on our homestead it's a lot about storage space now because a lot of people have been asking us, well you know, what do you do if you're in a small house and you're needing to store food? We don't have a lot of room. Well, our, our ancestors use dehydration. As long as we've dehydrated these properly, these will not go bad and they did not lose a lot of their nutritional value like they do when you can them under high pressure. Stuff is canned under high pressure, if the seal breaks, you lose it. This way we're kind of guaranteed that our food source is going to last for quite some time and that way, you know, we feel a little bit safer about it. Yeah, so. and we use the next caliber and Danny's going to work on a sun a solar. I'm, I'm in the process of designing a solar dehydrator. In the event that we don't have electricity to run the Excalibur, we will be able to uh, still dehydrate our fruits and vegetables so that, um, you know, should something happen where we have to be off grid, you know, we will at least be able to maintain our food sources. Okay, guys, this is the other tip we had for you on English peas. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.